Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Thursday declared former Governor Yaya Bilu of Kogi State wanted over alleged corruption to the tune of 80.2 billion naira. The commission had earlier this year alleged that the former governor converted 80.2 billion naira of state funds to personal use in September of 2015, about four months before he assumed office. The case was filed before Justice Omotosho at the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja. On Wednesday, the EFCC dragged Belo to another Federal High Court sitting in Abuja on the same charges alleged to have been committed in February 2016, less than one month of assuming office as governor. Yaya Belo had on February 12, 2024, secured an interim order at the Kogi State High Court restraining EFCC or its agents and persons related to it from continuing to harass, detain, arrest, or prosecute him, pending the hearing and determination of the substantive originating motion for the enforcement of his fundamental human rights. Well, for all that's been brought to the public domain concerning this matter of the EFCC versus Yahaya Bello and many other possible angles that are not being adequately examined as should be, especially the relevant legal angles, we're now being joined by Ola Daniel, a lawyer and public affairs analyst. Good morning and uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Daniel. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, then. So let's get straight into it. Now, we, we saw what happened at Benghazi Street, of course, over uh, the duration of this week. But if you could just provide an overview of the legal basis for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission's attempt to arrest the former Kogi State uh, Governor Yah Yahaya Bello over the allegations of the laundering of more than 80 billion naira. What exactly is the issue here? Let's talk about that. Well, um, if we talk about issues, there are many sides to this, uh, many twists to the issue on ground. But then, uh, for a fact, I may speak more on the legal side of this issue because uh, I cannot speak of what uh, I do not know or I do not have. Um, as we speak, we all know it's this trite law that courts of coordinate jurisdiction is not superior to one another. So if there is any judgment of a particular court, the only way to vacate such other or such judgment is to go to a superior court. Now, over years, over time, EFCC has been, I mean, been known for uh, um, this kind of sh shenanigans of, um, I mean, going around to just pick people, no investigation. That is the reason most times when they get to court, you see that they lose most of the cases in court. And how do I mean? If there's an order of court and there is a restraining order on an arrest, then you believe in the so-called court, then you went further to court of appeal. Now, to appeal such order, then the court of appeal has given a date for hearing, which is 22nd, which is Monday. Then you went further to another federal high court to seek another order to arrest and to prosecute ex-governor. I, I really need to understand because there are two major part, uh, uh, two major uh, um, um, group of people in this country that has really not helped our rule of law. And one is the politician and the other one is the anti-graft agencies. Because if you believe in the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the judicial system and you go to court for some redress, then the court give judgment or give an order, then you still go ahead. This is not, I mean, this is not a, a, a barbaric island and it's not a, a zoo so where anybody can decide and decide whatever they want to do. If you, have, you believe in the cause, why don't you go through the normal process? We are not advocates of corruption. I detest it. In fact, anyone that is found culpable should answer for his case, but then to do it, you must 
follow the rule of law. You must do it right. You don't use the wrong thing to correct the wrong thing. Declaring ex-governor wanted, laying siege against him in his house, it, it, it is a national embarrassment. The way ESC is going about this is a total, a, a, a total disappointment to some of us. Because this particular, this, the chairman of ES, EFCC is a lawyer. And I expect that he knows better. Though, I may not be too surprised because I've heard some of our senior, uh, I mean, uh, uh, lawyers and uh, I've heard their opinions on this. And I have asked myself that where is the position of the law when somebody ma made a statement that says that court cannot stop somebody from being arrested? And I ask, the same court you can go and get a warrant of arrest. But the court cannot tell you not to arrest. And I ask myself, where is it written under our law that court cannot, the court does not have power to, 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 to save, to give an order or judgment that someone cannot be you know, arrested? So these are things we really need to look at holistically, critically, to ask ourselves, are we doing the right thing? If we have claimed that someone is, is, someone is wrong or someone has allegedly committed an offense, then we should do the right thing. Because another angle to it, the question I want to ask EFCC, you, you went to court, the Federal High Court, on an allegation that somebody stole 80 billion that belonged to the state. And that came 2015, even before the man became a governor. You amended it in another Federal High Court, to say it is since 2016 that he stole the same 80 billion naira. Now, you, when the, this came up, that was three weeks. Three weeks into his office, when he was sworn in. The question again, how much is the total budget of Kogi State in, 2020, in 2016? Is there something fishing somewhere? So now, you now expect this man to surrender himself to you. Left to me, I will advise, uh, I will advise uh, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Yayabelo to, so, to give in and surrender. If he has not done anything, let us see whether we will get justice or not. But now the fear is this. If EFCC is going this route, there is no one that will be at peace to say, I will get justice at which this is going. Will I be prosecuted or persecuted? That will be the questions from many you know, from many people. And that is why you can see that Mr. Yayabelo is probably hiding and running from persecution. And that is what some of us also see. If there is court order, follow court order to the letter. You have gone to court of appeal. Why will you go to court uh, of the, the, the coordinates jurisdiction to seek the same thing you are looking for? to arrest somebody. For me, this is abuse of court processes. This is abuse of the judiciary. I mean, saying, uh, using your influence, using your power to decide then the next thing. I don't think this matter is a treasonable offense. So I do not see a reason why the military will be involved, the, uh, the IG is involved, the executive is involved, the All legislator right. is involved, everybody they are on uh, um, Yaya Bello. All right. All right. Declaring if, him wanted. If I can come in, if I can come in now, uh, if I can come in now so that you can further unpack this, uh, as you said, from the legal standpoint. Uh, you have made uh, very useful submissions about the fact that, um, you know, uh, EFCC seems to be behaving uh, in a non-becoming way in trying to arrest uh, uh, a former governor based on, you know, mere allegations uh, for an offense that may not be treasonable in nature. But you have also alluded to uh, 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 a different showpiece in all this, uh, the intentment of the federal government in all this case, because it, it doesn't look to an average eye, an average Nigerian, that this is just about the EFCC. Given what the Inspector General of Police has said in withdrawing uh, the orderlies and the security of the former governor, in what the Immigration Service has said to say that I arrest him, you know, uh, if he attempts to uh, leave the country. And even the, uh, the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice is also saying, you know, he's also waiting in, uh, which gives uh, a kind of um, 
indication that this may not just be about the EFCC, but about, you know, the federal government, you know, looking for Yaya Belu. What are your specific thoughts on this type of a thing? Is this something that will be considered a new law? Or is this how um, uh, we will move forward dealing with uh, suspects, especially those who are politically exposed? And in law, you have said that, yeah, um, maybe Yaya Belu should hand himself over. But given how, you know, the entire drama around it has gone, do you think that... Um, the law will be fair to him, at least from the point of view of the EFCC. Yeah, that is the reason why I said that um, Yaya Belo may not give in and may not surrender because of the entire drama. How he started, if you remember, I started by saying that the file in matter from 2015. And to 2016, three weeks in, uh, I mean, uh, when he became the governor. So it means that there's something that is not clear to us. There's something that we do not know. Like you, uh, you also said, maybe there's some powerful uh, cabal somewhere in the uh, government that are all bent, whether the Ayabelo had offended them by way or not, or he has miscalculated in his political, uh, I mean, uh, journey. And they, they decide to say, okay, we're going to show you. Now, what I need to say to this is clear. We remember when EFCC was, uh, I mean, uh, when EFCC came up, in not, uh, I think that should be 1999, there about 2000. And uh, during uh, former president of Basojo, and a lot of people believe that it was used as a two, uh, as a, uh, uh, a bulldog to earn some people that are enemies of the government or of the president at that time. And for a long time, that happened. And this moment, we, in fact, I had so much hope, so much belief when this new EFCC chairman came on board because he's a lawyer and I expected more from him. And I expected that what has happened in the past will not happen. But what we are still seeing, more like we're still seeing the same thing. EFCC is not independent anymore. EFCC feels that, okay, I can't do this job. If you feel that you are on, 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 on your job and you know what you are doing and there's an allegation against somebody and you want to go for this person, then do you need immigration? Do you need the, the IG? Do you need uh, the military? Do you need the uh, attorney general of the federation? Do you need all these people? To gather together, it means that something is not clear to some of us. And that is what we are asking the government. We are, I'm not really a fan of anybody, and I'm not holding brief for anybody. But if we have to do anything, let's do it well, because we don't know who is the next person tomorrow. The former chairman of EFCCC, when, when uh, a judgment came and they didn't obey the judgment of the court, and people started shouting that, no, obey the judgment of court, we reminded them that when... You were the chairman. You did the same thing. And we told you then to be cautious because it will come to somebody's turn. And it, get, it, it got to your turn. So now, even Mr. Chairman of EFCC should be careful. And it should not be pushed around by some politicians. And it should not be pushed around by some sentiment. I think it should do its job. What is sworn an oath to? To uphold. I think it should face it. And we should leave all this said, if there are issues with government, there are some people uh, that, that, that have issues with Yaya Bello and they want to go through this route. I think the chairman of EFCC should look at his integrity, should look at his antecedent, and should look at what it stands for and do the right thing as against answering the call of the people that pays. Because we, 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 we've heard so much stories. We've, had, we, we've seen a lot of things. And we know some prosecutors, even in ESCC, we know how they make sure that they do some things just because of what they want to get from it. And that is the reason when you see them get into court in the, at the end of the day, you see the charges are watery, that they don't come out with anything at the end of the day. It happened to Fire Chase time. It happened in uh, 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 Otuba Daniels, Benga Daniels. So it, to some, a lot of them, 
the people that are benefited from court restraining people from being arrested. That is, one of them is the senior president of today. We have a number of them like that. So what is different about this? Our appeal to EFCC, stop embarrassing us nationally. Stop, stop embarrassing us internationally. Because you are making us, I mean, a laughing stock out there to the entire world. Because if anybody listen to what is happening or see what is happening today, the question is to you. Say, so why are you showing up all these shenanigans? All this Ula Balu is not necessary. Yes, sir. You can do your job without making any scenes. Mm -hmm. Because the public, they, you want to get the sentiment of the public or what, or sentiment of who now to do your job. You went to barricade the, the, the person's house. You declare him wanted. We are not saying, there's no law that says you must invite. Yes, you could invite because in practice, what you've been doing is to invite. And this person has said that, you have never invited me. I have not seen anything from you. Then we are in court to stop all this. Then you went to another court of the same jurisdiction to get an order to arrest me. Of course, I will not be at peace. Can we actually speak about that? Can we speak in about the, that? In, Instead of speaking about the EFCC, actually, can we move on to our judiciary? Because as you said, the EFCC did get an ex parte order, which allowed them, um, which allowed for the arrest of um, Yahya Bello. This um, ex parte order was given on Wednesday in the Federal High Court um, by Justice Emeka Nwite. And so now I want to ask, you know, as a lawyer, let's talk about our judiciary. What happens when we have courts of the same, you know, jurisdiction, when we have opposing orders coming out from different courts where we have you know there's there's obviously the case that was filed on the 11th of march to try and counter the injunction that was um given by the high court in kogi states but however on wednesday this um week we did have another ex parte order which was given by a justice of the high um, federal high court in abuja i'm assuming with knowledge of the other pr um case but he still had gave out this order to go on for the arrest of Yahya Bello. So what does this say about ju our judiciary when we have these different um, just you know these different judgments, these different processes coming out of even the same federal high court sitting in Abuja? Well, it is a it is a sad uh, it is a sad one uh, for us, um, and some of us we've. Uh, talked about this in the past, and we have said it, that the judiciary should be independent. When I mean independent, because yes, on paper, we say it's independent of the executive and of the legislature. But in practice, every day, we see that it is not, because most times, these politicians come in and they pollute the judiciary. Because I do not know how somebody will explain to me that court of coordinates jurisdiction we give different judgment on the same subject matter. For instance, if you look, remember what happened in the past, there were some judges that were sanctioned for doing the same thing that we are talking about today. Because these politicians know how to go to different courts, the same subject matter in like 10 different court, uh, court of coordinates jurisdiction. And that is what we are also seeing today. And I think the judiciary really need to sit down and check all this abnormality and stop this because this is not projecting the judiciary well to the world. And this is not also projecting the judiciary well to the common man out there. It's to, because what they are doing, what they are projecting to the common man is to say, can we really get justice in Nigeria? If a court has given an order, then another one, of, because it is trite law that a court of a summary jurisdiction will be superior to one another. If there is any redress anybody seeks, it is trite law that any court like that will go to a superior court. And which is the superior court in this matter is the court of appeal. So what the shenanigans that we are seeing today in judiciary, I think we, it needs serious caution. And we need to call the stakeholders to order. And that is why we are saying that the man is afraid that he may not get justice. Because if we are seeing things like this, it means that some people are dictating the tune. And they said, who dictated the tune plays the piper? So, well, you see, if we are not careful, 
if we are not careful, I hope that we are not aiming towards anarchy, and I hope that we are not aiming to to a self to to a self. Um, what is the word now? To a self help from every Nigerian because they may not have interest, they may not have belief in the judiciary anymore, and they may not even want to approach court for anything because to them they had concluded, like what is happening today as to Jaya Bilo, I'm sure his fear is I cannot get justice. Mr. The way this is going, I cannot get justice. So if I'm presented to the, to, uh, I mean, to, these people will just keep me there. And that is why he's running. But if it is a judiciary that we all believe in and they are doing their job and we are not having all these, uh, I mean, uh, uh, um, shenanigans, I, I think um, uh, it, is, it, is, it is time for a call on the judiciary to sit down and let us address this issue. And I call on the Chief Justice of Nigeria to come in into this matter and stop all this uh, all this um, national embarrassment that the judiciary is also giving us because I do not see the court that, would, that should end. I don't see any reason why a court should entertain such suit coming to, I mean, to his table. If you know that, oh, this suit, we, it is everywhere. That, oh, there's an high court judgment on this. The next thing should be court of appeal. You should not be coming, they shouldn't come to your court, but this politician or this anti-graft agency, they are very, they, I don't want to use the word smart, but maybe I will use the word cunning. Because when they are going to the other court, they may just twist and change just one of the charges. Or just change something and they will say, oh, it is a new charge. So it's not what was taken to court A or court B. So they do this all the time. So even if we are blaming the judiciary, also we need to still give... That's, I mean, uh, uh, that, 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 that window, we need to leave that window open to say, okay, it may not really be their fault in entirety because maybe they are changing one thing or the other. But then there should be a standard. There should be a standard that you know this is the same matter. It's, somebody, it's, it's like somebody changing the grammatical phrase of whatever he has filed in court A and he's using another one in court B. You should have a standard to know that, oh, this is what they are doing. And it should not, if the moment we stop it and we don't, we, we don't allow it fly, the moment the court stop this thing and don't allow it fly, whoever that is coming to court to, 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 to bamboos the court or to find a way of deceiving court, the court will know. And yes, such sir. person should be penalized. Thank you so much. Such person should be sanctioned. Thank you so much for discussing this topic with us this morning. And we look forward to seeing how this plays out both in our courts and with the future of Kogi State.